Good morning. I'm your host, Davida Shinsky, and you're listening to Live Without Limits, Change Your Thoughts Challenge. And today's show is how can positive affirmations improve your life and the science behind them. What are positive affirmations? Do you find yourself overwhelmed with negative thoughts? Sometimes it's not just the world that is full of negativity. It's also our own mind nudging us to think the words or the worst of ourselves. There are many people who believe that such a serious and complex problem can have a great simple solution. They start telling themselves the opposite of the negative thoughts they have. The solution is called positive affirmations. They are thoughts in the form of simple phrases that you intentionally create and repeat to yourself. Positive affirmations are most powerful when they challenge negative and anxiety inducing thoughts, but they can also be phrases that provide support and encouragement when we need them the most. We publish daily to help you to change your mind and begin to think more positively. Because remember, it's the experiences we have every day that affect us. So even if you're a positive person who likes to see the good in everything, it doesn't mean that sometimes you're not going to have negative feelings. But it's always has to be something where you can look at it and understand exactly how to take things and rework them so that you can have a better outlook on life. Because when you think of the laws of attraction, you think about the energy forces that you're putting out. And whatever you're putting out, that's what you're getting back. The science of benefits behind positive affirmations. So to tackle your problems, you just need to repeat positive thoughts. Yes, the science backs it up. Positive affirmation practices have been linked to a reduction in stress and the effect of negative thoughts and in turn an increase in cognitive performance and creativity. As the world famous psychologist Daniel Kahneman said or describes in his bestseller Thinking Fast and slow, the brain has two systems through which it functions. One is responsible for our conscious and deliberate thoughts. The other operates quickly and automatically with no voluntary control and no effort. And that's what we call our unconscious thoughts. You ever get used to a habit where you go a certain direction to get from your home to work, and then it's like after a while you you'll you'll be taking that road and you'll be getting to your destination and you'll wonder how you got there. Well, that's because that's your unconscious thoughts taking over. So the decisions we make without any conscious thoughts are the realm of beliefs, generalizations, and basis that each of us has and forms throughout our lives. He explains that those are mental shortcuts designed to make quick decisions that were vital to our survival when resources were scarce. They were also decisions that were energy efficient because the brain consumes a lot of energy compared to its size. There's no denying that we receive a lot of information from our environment and it filtered through 
those mental shortcuts, which in turn affects our actions and judgment. Thankfully, those beliefs that we hold are not innate and fixed, but ones that can be changed with deliberate practice. So if you've ever had a vision problem, you know what a miracle it is to put on the right pair of glasses or lenses. And positive affirmations are the pair of glasses that will allow you to see yourself in the world in a way that makes you feel better and gives you the chance to take action towards your goals. The negativity bias. Unfortunately, each of us has a negativity bias to some extent, which means we tend to dwell on our negative emotions more than our positive emotions and thoughts. But if we utilize and incorporate positive affirmations in our life, it can allow us to restore balance in our life and make us realize that the voice in our head that keeps bickering insults aimed at us may not be right after all. Positive affirmations can also help us achieve our goals because it makes us more confident in our abilities and decreases our stresses, which then enhances our cognitive performance. Finally, positive affirmations may improve our relationships with other people because low self-worth often leads to isolation and unwillingness to develop social bonds with others due to a false belief that we are not worthy of love. So how to practice positive affirmations. First, you need to craft the positive affirmation phrases you will be using. It's best to begin by reflecting on who you are as a person. What are your current struggles and aspirations? This is important so that you align the positive affirmations that you intend to use with your core values so that you have a very clear idea of what actions and thoughts lead you to feel anxious and insecure. After you figure that out, it's time to create phrases that are the opposite of the negative thoughts that keep spinning in your head. If you have reflected that I'm not go good enough, an example of a positive affirmation would be, I'm worthy of love, or I'm doing my best every day and that's enough. You could also use encouraging phrases such as, I'm confident. I'm powerful, I'm fearless, that serve to reaffirm your positive perception and offer support. Make sure that your positive affirmations are personal, easy to remember, and understandable. This means that they should generally be short and simple, so they are easy to practice. Usually, it's best to start with two to three. Repeat them whenever you can. Put them in your phone or write them around your home so that you see them every day. You may even discuss them with friends and relatives so they can keep you accountable if you want to. Try past positive affirmations and see how you feel. With all of that in mind, don't be afraid to try affirming positive thoughts. The new year, make a habit of stay positive and take steps towards a better life 
and positive affirmations at a time. Now, I'm very familiar with and have talked about transactional analysis. And when you talk about the parent, the adult, the child, what happens? Well, for one thing, what are they doing? The, you can have a parent that's constantly telling you, oh, you can't do that. Uh, oh, you know, you can't live on your own. You can't think for yourself. You can't hold the job. Because what they're doing is only repeating the things that were said to them when they were children. And you, what happens is you hear those things in your head so much that that becomes your thought processes. And you have to change things around and begin to see them differently. Therefore, when you, once you start seeing them differently and giving different messages to yourself, then you are beginning to accept yourself and love yourself for who you are and not what someone else wants you to be.